Well, good morning. Welcome to Naperville. It's a pleasure to have you all here today. My name is Steve Cherico. I'm the mayor of Naperville. I'm here this morning with my wife, Julie, over in the corner. Thank you for being here, sweetheart. I'd like to start by thanking the governor, Governor Ronner, and Lieutenant Governor Sanguinetti for their leadership. It's an honor to have them here with us today. It's also an honor to recognize some of our elected officials. With us today is Senator Conley, Representative Worley, Representative Franks, Representative Demmer, Representative Batnick. Thank you all for being here. It's great to have you. We also have with us the DuPage County Chairman Dan Cronin. Thank you for your leadership, Chairman. How are you, sir? Great, <laughs> uh, Chairman Cronin started the DuPage Act Initiative. Act is an acronym for accountability, consolidation, and transparency. Thank you for your leadership in that effort. And joining us from Will County Board is Suzanne Hart. Suzanne, thank you. I'd also like to thank Naperville Township Trustees for being here, especially uh, Janice Anderson and Township uh, Supervisor Rachel Lucera, who have worked very collaboratively, collaboratively on this effort. We appreciate the, the partnership. Also with us today is uh, Mayor Wisner and Alderman Mervine from the city of Aurora. Uh, many of you don't know that half of Naperville Township residents reside in Aurora. So the Aurora residents will benefit from this consolidation equally. So very important. And also with us uh, is Mayor from Lyle, Mayor Joe Broda. Thank you for being here, sir. Uh, I'd like to also recognize my uh, Naperville City Council colleagues here in the front row. Uh, just last Tuesday, uh, they unanimously directed staff to uh, move forward on this initiative. And I, I want to especially thank uh, Councilman Kevin Coyne for his uh, leadership in that respect. Back in January, uh, January I was uh, very happy and proud to join the Governor and Lieutenant Governor in the release of the Task Force Report. Uh, so, uh, Lieutenant Governor Sanguinetti, thank you for leading such an important role in this uh, effort. And this uh, uh, state is very much in, in need of these uh, reforms. Naperville has always been known as a well-governed community, a community that provides great service and a great value to our taxpayers. We are also known for partnerships and collaboration and finding an innovative solutions. This is a great example of all of us coming together from different backgrounds, working to find the best value for our taxpayers. As elected officials, it is our responsibility to look for the most efficient and effective way to provide these services. I'd like to also recognize our staff for the hard work on this initiative. They say government moves slowly. It was just six or eight weeks ago when this report was um, unveiled. Four weeks ago when the City Council directed staff to uh, find a solution, review this report and, and find a solution. And then just last Tuesday, uh, our city council took a unanimous vote to push it forward. So this is a great example of government moving a little bit more quickly, and that's, a, that's nice to see. Uh, it is my pleasure to now introduce uh, Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Illinois, Lieutenant Governor Evelyn Sanguinetti. Thank you, Mayor. Is there a way to do this? Just, just understand that our governor, who's six foot four, gets it last. So I don't want to go too hard on this. Um, so good morning. It's so great to be here um, on my stomping ground, DuPage County, and with my good friends here in Naperville. I'm looking over to my left, um, and I see members of my task force. Um, I, I see Mayor Pradel, who's not a member of the task force, but I wanted to say good morning. Uh, but we also have here with us today Mayor Darch. Uh, Illinois uh, Municipal League Chairman, uh, Mr. Brad Cole, and of course Warren Dixon, and Dr. Darlene Rossetti. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for all of your hard work with the task force throughout the course of a whole year. So I'm here this morning to first of all commend the mayor and his team. You see, the first thing he did was read all 400 pages of our task force report, which as you know, is very thoughtful, but at the same time, voluminous. So thank you. And then all kidding aside, I also wanted to commend the mayor and his team because they used our task force report as a conversation starter. They took a look at issues that we took a look at as a task force throughout the course of an entire year. Issues such as township road mileage and intergovernmental cooperation. But then they took all this information and they thought as their own unit of government. They thought as Napervillians and they constructed ideas that would streamline and deliver more efficient, effective services for their own Naperville. See, that's the whole point of this task force report, to give the power back 
to the locals, and that's exactly how you, how you folks have utilized it. So now I challenge all the other communities throughout our great state to take Neighborville's lead and to start these thoughtful conversations in their own communities. And you know what, now it's time also for Springfield to start looking away at ways to eliminate the hurdles that are preventing units of lo local government from consolidating all together. You see, about a year ago when Bruce Rauner issued the executive order empowering this task force report to exist, we took a whole year to deliver 27 very thoughtful proposals on how to streamline government and make it better for all of you. And throughout the course of the year, I don't know if Bob Sanchez is back there from DuPage, that was the first question I got when the task force report uh, was announced, which is, what makes your report, what's going to make it any different than any other report in history that finds its fate on top of a shelf and collecting dust? Well, the answer is before us today, brothers and sisters, because we're all uniting to put batteries inside of this task force report and make it a reality. And that's what we're doing here today. So going forward now, we want to give the power back to local government so that you folks could decide what's best for you. We want to empower your local leaders to be able to use these tools so that you folks could make this ultimate determination. Now, I'd like to finally end by thanking the legislators who are with us today as well as our great governor. You see, we have all the tools we need right now to make this task force report a reality. We have a governor that's fighting very hard for the state of Illinois every day, and we have this report. So let's make it happen. I thank the legislators and the governor for making sure that this will become legislation and will become our reality. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to move on to uh, Representative Jack Frank. Thanks. I'll leave it where it is. <laughs> Good morning. I'd first like to thank uh, the Lieutenant Governor for her leadership and Governor Rauner for creating the task force. I, I had the privilege of chairing the previous uh, commission and glad to see that it was somewhat useful as a base, but we weren't moving forward without the governor's leadership. So I wanted to thank you because it would ne we've never gotten this far without the governor. <laughs> and and this, this administration has a real commitment to consolidation. And though we don't agree on all of the proposals, we can find common ground and we can move together on those that we agree on. And this has been a cause that's been near and dear to my heart, I know to many of you as well, and I've, I've never been so confident that we're, gonna, we're actually going to move things forward this year. And our present system of 7,000 governments is simply unsustainable. It's also a big reason why we have the second highest property taxes in the nation. Our system is bloated, it's inefficient, it's opaque, and it's unaccountable. And our system, as a result, is open to corruption and abuse. And we need to stop digging a deeper hole. And it's time for government to get out of the shadows. And by implementing these ideas, I believe that we can begin to restore balance, eliminate redundant governments, and most importantly, we can save taxpayers' money. We can also hold our decision makers accountable and stop the madness of the ever-increasing property taxes. I look forward to working with you all to make that a reality. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Demmer, I apologize. <laughs> I had that written down. I was waiting for my cue, so I thank apologize. you. <laughs> Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today to support these proposals um, because they all really revolve around one central theme, and that is delivering value to taxpayers, whether that's through reduction of expenses, improvement of efficiency, of streamlining, uh, elimination of redundancy. I think we see an opportunity to empower citizens and local governments to try to get the best bang for their buck and make sure that taxpayers get a good deal. I think in life and in government, it's often easy just to be satisfied with the status quo and to look at what we have today and say this is the way we've always done it. We should continue to do that. But if you think about where these units of local government came from to begin with, it was from legislation, from acts of local governments, from referenda in the past. And I think it's our duty as elected officials to revisit those issues from time to time to make sure that what worked then still works today and to empower units of local government and voters to make that decision. 
Nothing in these bills come as a mandate from Springfield. They come as putting the empowerment back in the hands of voters and locally elected officials to make decisions that make sense for them. I think the, uh, each of these proposals give us meaningful steps we can take to make sure that taxpayers get the best services at the best value in the best way possible for their communities. So I thank the governor and lieutenant governor for their leadership on this, and I look forward to working with colleagues on both sides of the aisle for bipartisan and meaningful reforms. I'd like to turn it over to a member, a fellow member of my task force, Representative Mark Batnick. Um, I'm excited to be here today. I want to thank the governor and the lieutenant governor's leadership on the committee. It was an honor to be on the committee. A um, little inside baseball, when we're down in Springfield and I have my speak button hit to, to talk about a bill, sometimes we don't know what the order is going to come up. And sometimes Representative Demmer comes up before me, which is when I often turn my speak button off because he says things so eloquently. So taking a lot of my points. So I'm going to make this efficient because this is about efficiencies. <laughs> A lot of, uh, you hear a lot of talk about, do we cut services or do we raise taxes? We don't have to do either. It, just spending one year in Springfield, what I realize is that there's a lot of inefficiencies in the way we do things, and that's what this task force is, is about. So we, we do have the opportunity to provide the necessary services that we need to to the citizens with, without having to raise taxes in order to do it. And that's, that's what this is about. And a lot of these issues are low-hanging fruit, bipartisan issues, and are things that the uh, legislator should be taking up very quickly. So thank you very much for your time, and I will turn it over to Senator Connolly. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, thank you, Representative Batnick, and, and thank you for being here in the 21st Senate District. I want to thank Jack Franks for dressing up today for the occasion. <laughs> um, but it's also the 42nd state represent, 41st, 41st State Representative District, and Representative Grant Worley, I know personally, because I was at the meeting, uh, has been a big advocate of what we're trying to do today. So I want to thank you publicly for that. Uh, Naperville has a well-earned uh, reputation for doing things right, doing things efficiently, and annually, I read the papers, I see what the staff does to find efficiencies. But more importantly, out here on Warrenville Road, BP Amico, Lucent Technologies, I know this firsthand, former Lucent employee over there, Dick Furstenau, uh, they're required to find efficiencies every year. Middle management is told, find 15%, not if you can. You must do it. And in large measure, what we're doing today is incorporating the best practices of business into the public sector. And a year and a half ago, the people of the state of Illinois, that's what they decided. They decided career politicians, they'd had enough with them. And it was time to bring a businessman into state government to incorporate the best practices of the private sector to deliver those services in a cost-efficient manner. It is an incredible honor to introduce the governor of the state of Illinois, Bruce Rauner. Morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. This is a very, very good day for the people of Illinois. It's a privilege for me to be standing here with these uh, members of the General Assembly. It's an honor for me to work with them. Thank you for all of you who believe in good government. Thanks for participating. Everybody who participated in the task force on government consolidation and the unfunded mandate relief, thank you for your work. It's a great team effort by hundreds of people all over the great state of Illinois. This today is a great day because it's about giving power back to the people of Illinois to the people at the local level in their communities, to get power over the, co the costs of government that they deal with every day. Um, in Springfield, the debate is raging. Do we cut services or raise taxes? Do we cut services or raise taxes? That shouldn't really be the conversation. It should be how do we shrink the bureaucracy, shrink the cost of government, so we can put more money into our human services into our school system, which for me is the number one priority, and how do we grow our tax revenue, not through tax increases, but through a more growing economy? That's got to be the conversation. We need to change the focus. Higher tax rates or fewer services? No. It's about empowering taxpayers and our competitiveness and growing our economy and shrinking the government bureaucracy so we can put the money into our schools, and into our social services. That's the key to the long-term prosperity for our state. That's what this task force report is about. Now that the, uh, the task force recommended 27 points of action that we could take. Some are more controversial than others. Some are harder to implement than others. It's okay. Um, change is hard. Change takes time. We've picked out four pieces of legislation that we're proposing right now 
We're proposing four bills led by the uh, members of the General Assembly right here today. Those four bills encompass eight of the 27 points. Eight of the 27 points are encompassed in these four pieces of legislation. This doesn't mean we're giving up on the other um, 19. We're not at all. We're drafting those bills as we speak. Uh, we, we, you know, what we'd like to do is get some successes and walk before we run. There's, we've got bipartisan agreement on these. Let's get them done. Let's start the process of saving taxpayers money. Let's win this fight to protect the taxpayers of Illinois. Let's win the battle to make Illinois more competitive. And for those who might be tempted to say, Governor, these efforts around consolidation or mandates or workers' comp or tort reform or those are all, those are, you know, they don't relate to the budget. We don't want to talk about them. Let's be clear. This is directly about the state budget, directly. If we can relieve taxpayer burden at the local level on property taxes for our working families and for our small business owners, our small business owners can find it easier to grow and invest. And, and when they invest and grow, that's more tax revenue for the state without raising rates. It comes through growth. And if we can shrink the bureaucracy, and reduce the tax burden, it's going to be much easier to have confidence in the business community. So when I travel the nation and travel the world on my nickel recruiting companies to come to Illinois, they'll have more confidence that Illinois is on a track of being competitive, that the tax burden is not going to be crushing them if they came and invested here. We can expand our tax base and grow our state tax revenue. It's directly tied to the budget. Anybody who says otherwise is not dealing with the, the, with the reality of the situation. And we've got to change the conversation. It's not about higher rates or fewer services. It's about growth, and it's about fighting for value for taxpayers, protecting our homeowners, protecting our small business owners, and we will have a prosperous future. We have the hardest working people in America here. We have the best location of any state in America right here. We can be building a wonderful future. We're going to do it together. This is one step in that direction. Thank you all. Bless you. Appreciate it. Let's go get these bills passed. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, with that, I'd love to open it up to questions. Uh, I know there's a lot going on in the world. If we could focus on these issues first, and then we can open it up to other issues. And I would love the, uh, members of the General Assembly to join in, in answering uh, the questions. Anybody? Yes, sir. Governor, in the, uh, in the local case here with the uh, Naperville uh, Road Commissioner, says that he's looking at the numbers right now, and it doesn't look as if much money, if any, is going to be saved, because the money would still be going over the, the city of Naperville. And uh, people, he says, would be getting possibly less fewer services. Uh, anybody want to talk about the specific? Sure. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the numbers prove out pretty well, and, uh, you know, we've presented the information to the, uh, to the township. There's uh, the quote from the city of Naperville is $1 million to handle all the road services for the Naperville township residents. Uh, the current budget is $1.86 million. So it's about a 43% uh, tax credit. And the interesting thing is, is that is across all of the Naperville residents, not just the unincorporated folks. It is true that uh, some of the services that the unincorporated residents will be reduced slightly to the same norm that the uh, incorporated residents receive. Uh, I think that's fair and equitable. Uh, that's certainly the way that um, we would only propose it that way, to make sure it's the same level of service. But the numbers uh, are very simple to, to prove out, and so uh, um, that's, that's, those are just the facts of it. Sorry, what's that? What? You want to, is that something you should talk about? You want to talk about that right now? Sure, I can take this call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we did put together a fact sheet here. And um, we have, uh, let's see here if I can read it. Excuse me. The, uh, the cost of services for the, uh, the, Per household for the, excuse me. You know I can't read this right now. I have to get my glasses. So I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to that. Let me let, let me say this is you're asking a really important point. This because a lot there will be naysayers to say, well, this really won't save money, or it'll. And uh, you know the this fact is the system exists because somebody wanted it. it it's, it's not like it just randomly happened. So when we change it, somebody's ox is going to get gored. And that's just true. And so we're going to have some pushback, and we're going to have naysayers, and there are people who will argue the other side. Let's be clear. We have 7,000 units of government. 
Texas, which is way bigger than us, has 2,000 less, fewer, I guess is the right word. Um, we, we, we've configured this out. When I've done the math, on these first set of bills, we can save um, hundreds of millions of dollars. If we did everything of the 27 points, it's billions per year. Billions per year. So there'll be naysayers, there'll be doubters, they'll be saying, well, we can't do it, or, or uh, frankly, if I heard, uh, well, I listened to some of the arguments against, they say, well, really, we can do our services much more efficiently because we have this other unit, or we have that unit. If you followed their logical conclusion, we better add another thousand units. We'd be way better off and we'd be way more effective. We've got, to, we've got to get down to the core here and shrink the bureaucracy so the money can go where it belongs. Yes? Well, that's why I give a lot of credit to uh, Representative Jack Franks. He's a Democrat. Um, there are other Democrats who are very supportive of this effort. Um, I'm hopeful, um, hopeful that the Speaker will be supportive. Don't know yet. Um, but the reality is we need bipartisan reform. We are a, we are a two-party state. And some would, <laughs> uh, for, you know, for a while we weren't. We're a two-party state, and I hope that we'll work together in a bipartisan fashion. I, I would love to do a lot more than we're doing. I realize I can't get everything done I would like to. It's not possible. But we've got to find the bipartisan compromise to get things done. Can I hit that real quick? Sure. I just, real quick on that, we're starting, there's, there's not too many doors left. So we have to find, um, we have to find ways to make government uh, more efficient because that's squeezing out the necessary services. So when you look at, what, I talk a lot about higher education. You, when you look at the funding of higher education in, in the past, it's, in, it's where it is versus other states, it's actually relatively high. But a lot of the unfunded mandates and the way we do business is squeezing out money, making it to the classroom. So I believe it's a bipartisan position. People want social services. People want funding for education. People want uh, us to take care of the needy. And we can't continue down a path of doing things inefficiently. So I think it's actually a pretty easy sell. And when you sit down and talk to legislators on both sides of the aisle privately, we do find a lot of broad agreement on a lot of things. And we just have to make it a, a reality. Governor, out of those 7,000 units of government, how many would you say would be able to be done away with that's a good question. You know, uh, when I've looked at all the metrics of performance for states, like we're, we're dead last on, on, we're number 50 out of 50 for state support for education. Dead last. Okay? We're the highest on um, number of units of government. Um, we're one of the highest on the cost of workers' comp. On, at, we're we're um, an F on an environment for small business. Wherever on the good things, we're last or among the last, and, and on bad things, we're a leader. And what I've said, when we, let's measure the good, let's, let's, on all the good things, let's aspire to be average. Let's be average, okay? If we could pick out the good things and let's be average, we'll win. We will win because we've got better people, we've got a better location. So how about if we become the average of all the states of number of units of government? How about we do that? It's totally doable. Let's be average and we can win. We can win. Inspiring. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll say this, education funding in Illinois is broken. Um, I will say that we should not be dead last on state support for education. I have said from, for three years that we should increase state support for education and we should focus it more on lower income districts and uh, more rural districts. What I do not support and never will support is taking money from one district and giving it to another district. That, that I do not support. But we will increase state support for education. Uh, lawsuits will not get us there. Uh, that won't be helpful. But you know, this is we're a litigious society and whatever. We're, we we are going to improve education funding and hold our schools accountable. And we should have the best schools in America. I'm gonna fight hard for that. Is state funding for CPS a civil rights issue? The way that I personally think that education quality is the civil rights issue of our of our time. That's my personal belief. It's not just about CPS. You know, there are, folks, uh, there are folks in Chicago who want to say, Chicago's different. Chicago's special. 
We should be treated different. No. There are low-income students, there are minority students in Rockford and in Decatur and East St. Louis and Harvey. And you know what? Chicago doesn't di get to dictate terms. We have a state of great people. We work for every child in every community, and we're going to make sure that happens. Yes? Question for the mayor. Um, is this going to happen with an intergovernmental agreement, or are you just going to be turning over the highway services to the city? Because the papers were kind of Yeah, good question. The proposal is an intergovernmental agreement, so the road uh, district will still be, you know, be in place. It's sort of a paper district. Uh, they would just approve contracts and make sure insurance and things of that nature, but the city would provide all of the services. All right, and you have, I assume you have an elected highway commissioner? We do. This. Would you still have that position, or would that be one that would be eliminated because of that? You know, it's up to the township. Uh, they, they would have to make that decision. They're their own governmental body, so. Mayor? Yes? The, the, the highway commissioner said that he's likely to let it go towards um, making him do it by referendum. Are you willing to go that far? Uh, you know, I think that this is uh, this is an important issue, and uh, if it needs to go to a referendum, I'm confident that the uh, voters would support it. Uh, it's a 43% tax, you know, decrease, property tax decrease. That's a big deal. Uh, if you look at the numbers, the city of Naperville delivers this service at about half per lane mile as the township. The little dirty secret is, is that, that that township number is spread across a very large group of people, a base. And, uh, and most of those people, 90% of, or more than 90%, don't receive the service, but they pay for it. And so it's kind of a, it's an unfair system uh, as it is. Uh, and if you want to add insult to injury, when they ask for or, or, or re are receiving a higher level of service than the incorporated for folks are receiving, that's really, really insulting because, you know, they're, they're paying that bill. And so um, this is just a much fairer and more equitable solution. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Sanford, your yes. half of the township is kind of in Aurora. And Mayor Weisner is here from Aurora today and, and Alderman Mervine. Uh, yes, you're right. Half of the township is in Aurora. So uh, intergovernmental agreement with Aurora or independent contracts uh, like we do today. Uh, and we have Rachel Osera here from the township who might be able to add some. Well, good. Thank